guys, so I thought I would do some little Photoshop tutorials um, on how I prepare my work. This, I had to combine two scans into one. The painting was 11 by 14, but my scan bed's only 9 by 12. So I had to scan it in twice, and when I scan, I normally try to keep it going the same direction in case there's any bit of texture. Um, I know in the past, I've had a lot of issue with canvas. You want to scan it going the same way, otherwise you have two different light patterns on the canvas and they don't go together so well. I'm going to do this in two different ways. I normally cut off the end where the pieces will meet just in case there's any color distortion and then I save them and new file names. Um, I'm going to start with the photo merge, which is in Photoshop. I'm working in CS5, but I'm not all the Photoshops have it. There might be another program that has a tool like this for you. Um, but you have to have them with separate file names, and I go down to File, Automate, and Photo Merge. And it will bring up a little window. And you can add your files here. Sorry. Um, my pop-ups keep coming up on the other screen, so you can't really see me add the files, but I'm doing it. Now you want them to have two different file names. Um, like when I scan, it, it scan my pictures and they have the same name. So if you don't change their names, you will end up with only half of it. It won't bother photo merging. But it goes through this little dance and combines them for you. Sometimes I don't use this method because I can't always trust computers. You know, you, you have a loss of information. And I've had it actually taper up towards the top. And, like, it would get small in places where it really shouldn't be small. Like, there is some error. Um, I... Later on, I'll show another way of doing it, which is harder and should work with a lot of different programs, um, which I deal with the layers and turn the opacity down on a eraser tool. And then I compare the two. So you can see what might be different. Like this one actually turned out really well for the automated tool. Um, but I've had some terrible failures. But once you have a file together, you can crop it down, tilt it if it needs to be rotated at all, um, and you pretty much have your file. Now, to when I turn the image, I use the free transform tool, which is under edit, free transform. And I can free spin it around. It, it's a really neat tool. Like, I just kind of figured it out. I don't know that much about Photoshop, but I play around sometimes to learn how to do things. Um, but I also have used in the past, and I still on occasion I do image, image rotation, and then the arbitrary tool which you can change it for various degrees. You can rotate it clockwise or counterclockwise which is pretty handy. Now to do the next one. Another way how I merge them together is I open a new file to the resolution and size that I need. Like I'm doing 11 by 14 right now because the painting was 11 by 14. And I drag over both halves of the painting. Now I try to match them up as much as I can but sometimes they are skewed a little bit and I end up going back and using the free transform tool again. 
Um, I like the tool because you can do it within the layers. Um, like I don't know that much about Photoshop and before I was taking the individual pieces in a separate file and then just doing the arbitrary rotation tool on that and then dragging it over. But with this, like it's so much easier to match them up and I can even turn the opacity down on one of the layers so I can tell the lines are matching up pretty well. When I do the free transform tool, I end up trying to match up the sides as much as I can to try to get it so I know it's they're going the same direction at least. Um, I do that as much as possible before I start trying to merge them together. But you can move a layer down, up, or whatever, and make sure they are where they need to be but you always end up with like a faint line. Like you can tell where one scan is, is like over the other one. And when you turn the opacity down, like do it to the top layer and then you can move it around and try to make sure it's where it needs to be. But then, um, to correct the faint line, I also use a paintbrush tool, well, the eraser. But I turn the opacity down on that, and I erase little bits slowly of whatever layer is on top where that line would be, where they come together. The opacity for the brush tools and erasers are up towards the top of the window. But the ones for the opacity settings for the layers are down over in that little box over there. But I just roll the brush back and forth. Um, you let go of the button and you can make another stroke over that once you click again. But it's easy, but sometimes things start when you start erasing like things aren't completely perfect and you the lines can get a little fuzzy too sometimes you need to correct again and maybe move things a little bit because they're a little skew for me this is a little bit of a harder way and it's more time consuming especially when you have like six scans in like say I'm doing a 19 by 20 or 16 by 20 like something bigger, like when I end up with maybe even six scans or eight. Like it is very time consuming, but if you want it done correctly, you know, you're going to be paying attention to it. You're not, you don't have to worry about a machine putting some pixel somewhere where it really shouldn't be or miraculously cropping the sides or whatnot. When I compare these later, like you can tell the other one lost more around the sides, where this one did not. But you can you can tell now that they were two different scans, pretty much. And both are valuable methods. And this one, I believe, um, most programs like photo editing software like should have layer tools and opacity and something that you can do this with if you're not running Photoshop and it'll work with older versions pretty much. But I ended up cropping, you know, both pictures to get out the dead space where the scanner was pretty much. Um, I did ha end up losing more information on the other one. Like, I, I know I'm the one taking it away, but 
think the way things would just end up being kind of skewed, I could save more and like kind of pair it up and mesh this one a little better. Because I know the flowers on the left, there is more space in this one to the edge of the artwork than there was on the other version. And you can also see in the original one we did with the automate tool, there is a line, which freaked me out the first time I did it. I'm like, why is there a line through it? But that will go away when you flatten the image. But that's pretty much where it merged all the pixels at. I know this may not be news for some people, and a lot of people probably know how to do it. But I know when I first started, like, I wasn't sure how to scan in a large picture when I was dealing with them. And it was probably about eight years ago. And it was just kind of cool to find that automate tool, which can work. Don't always use it. But... You know, there's still other methods, and even if you're not using Photoshop, it's still possible. But in the first one, like, the corners were a little bit closer to the end. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Like... You guys might not be able to see the difference, but it's very subtle and I can tell where things aren't where they quite should be. But neither one, I didn't really lose much from the edge. Like sometimes the panels aren't completely perfectly square from the company I get them from and I've had that with several different brands. So my scans normally aren't absolutely perfect and I do lose information, but when I do it myself I end up just losing less of the outer edge instead of using the automate tool. So thank you for watching. Um, hopefully if you were looking for this information I have helped you in the slightest. If not, Sorry for wasting your time, and have a great day!